Virtually everyone that comes to visit one of our major cities in the West gets shocked to see the rapid degradation of our urban spaces. Those who live in these cities often learn to ignore the signs of decay that are spread everywhere. But those who are just passing by just can't believe what their eyes are seeing. Massive piles of trash, public defecation, rat infestations, and substance abuse all happening in broad daylight. Our western cities used to make our country proud and set an example for the rest of the world. Now, they serve as examples of America's accelerating downfall. The worst areas of our major western cities look like post-apocalyptic wastelands, and the lack of public sanitation leaves hordes of homeless people living in the dirt. The ironic thing is that many of these cities aren't poor at all. In fact, some of them are amongst the wealthiest cities in the U.S. That leaves us wondering if conditions are decaying so dramatically right now, how bad will things get when the economy starts to falter again? In today's video, we're going to expose the dire state of America's urban centers. But before moving on, please support us by leaving a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel so you don't miss our future videos. Let's just go ahead and start discussing the worrying rat epidemic that has been hitting Los Angeles. The rat problem in the sunny city is widespread and rampant, particularly in trash congested areas near the city's downtown. Due to poor public sanitation, the population of rats continues to grow. According to Orkin's survey of America's most rat-infected cities, LA now ranks number two. In 2018, the rat problem has become so out of control that it has resulted in a typhus outbreak. Typhus is typically spread by fleas who've been infected by diseased rats and other critters. In 2021, as schools came back after almost two years of intermittent shutdowns, this issue has gotten so bad that just before the new academic year started in August, a local high school was forced to close because they were invaded by rats. The LA Times reported that when the teachers arrived, they found a horrific scene. Rats on the floor, rat nests in the cabinets, excrement all over students' desks. Those who are unfamiliar with the sanitation problem faced by Los Angeles are drawn to the city because of the magical image portrayed in movies and on TV. But the truth is that LA is becoming a very filthy place. Needless to say, rats thrive in such an environment. In an article for the LA Times, journalist Steve Lopez details his battle against the rodents. East side, west side, north and south, they're everywhere. If you're a rat, the California housing crisis has not hit you yet, and it never will, he wrote. At our house, it sounded like the rats were having relay races in the ceiling, and they don't wear sneakers. Your eyes blink and your leg twitches as you drift off to sleep, knowing that if the plague comes back, you are living at ground zero. In our garden, they devoured entire heads of lettuce. They destroyed my squash, just before it was ripe and ready to eat, they stole my tomatoes, cilantro, and Anaheim chili peppers. Were they bottling their own salsa? Lopez humorously remarks. But there's no point in being too hard on LA because similar scenes are happening all across the West. For instance, a massive mice infestation led local authorities to close several restaurants and bars in Chicago this winter. Chicago's problem with rodents is well known by now. 2022 was the sixth consecutive year in which the city was ranked number one as the most rat infected in the entire country. The Chicago Tribune reported that when the economy reopened in 2021, Local businesses saw an explosion of rat complaints, with the creatures scurrying to find alternate dining. The city is aware of the problem, and a study conducted last year has shown that inadequate disposal of rubbish in high-density neighborhoods was the main cause. For over 10 years, Chicago has been attempting to tame the rat problem without success. 
That prompted a local humane society to try to tackle the issue by placing 10 to 15 feral cats in neighborhoods every month. So far, over 1,000 cats have been released on the city streets. Some locals say they did see a decline in the number of rats. We've been able to at least take this whole city block. We've seen a vast reduction in any sort of rat activity, and we no longer have rat droppings in our backyard, one of them said. The lack of proper sanitation and the significant growth of homeless encampments have also been contributing to the continuing degradation of U.S. urban life. In Salem, Oregon, the resident of one of such encampments said the rodent plague was out of control. Amid the trash, human despair and anguish, one weeping woman prepared to leave the most recent place she knows as home without any real inkling of where she'll go next. Terry Balo, an outreach worker with the Salvation Army, has been here for the darker moments of living life under a bridge. Anger, mental illness, substance abuse, and human frustration boiling over at times everywhere one looks. Yet, it was a rat infestation and a concern about human health that prompted the city of Salem to move the campus out, CBS reported. It just grew and grew and got worse, Bailu said. It's badder than people can imagine. There have always been homeless encampments and tent cities in America, but in recent years, the number of such spots has exploded. It's estimated that 750,000 Americans are homeless, and as housing becomes less affordable, that number continues to go up. In San Francisco, one of the nation's wealthiest cities, with an annual household income that's nearly double the national median household income, the number of homeless people rose by 20% since 2010. As the city became wealthier, it also became more unequal. A mind-blowing report published in November 2020 revealed that San Francisco experienced a massive increase in incidence of human feces found on public streets over the past decade. In 2010, around 5,000 reports of public defecation were registered by the San Francisco Department of Public Works. In 2020, the number increased to more than 30,000. Of course, the actual amount of feces on San Francisco streets is likely even higher than the data suggests. I will say there's more feces on the sidewalks than I've ever seen growing up here, San Francisco Mayor London Breed said. That is a huge problem, and we're not just talking about from dogs, we're talking about from humans. The city even employs a poop patrol that attempts to keep the streets clean, but the problem is bigger than that. It's an issue rooted in the city's struggle to accommodate its homeless population amid soaring rent prices and a dwindling supply of affordable housing. On top of that, public substance abuse is generally an ignored problem. One local resident said in an interview with NBC that authorities frequently overlook this issue. It's nasty seeing people shoot up right in front of you. Officers don't do anything about it. They'll get somebody for drinking a beer, but walk right past people using needles, the woman said. The United States has been enforcing multiple policies against illicit substance use since 1971, having spent over a trillion dollars, according to research from the University of Pennsylvania. And yet, the rates of addiction keep rising year after year. According to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, the number of users rose to 13% of Americans 12 years or older in 2020, hitting its peak from 40 years ago. Vonda Felbar Brown, senior fellow at the Center for Security Strategy and Technology at Brookings Institution, says, if the goal of these policies was to decrease substance abuse and the number of people victimized by it every year, then they still haven't made much progress. We're still in the midst of the most devastating drug epidemic in U.S. history, she stressed. Before the onset of the health crisis, market strategist at Shard Capital, Bill Blaine, visited San Francisco, and the things he saw left him so horrified he had to write about it. He said, I hope my American hosts will forgive me for raising this, 
but the squalor we saw in the city was frightful. San Francisco has always been one of my favorite U.S. cities, but the degree of homelessness, mental illness, and drug abuse we saw on this trip was truly shocking, he emphasized. Walking round San Francisco on a Sunday morning, we saw sights we could not believe. This must be one of the richest cities in the world, home to four of the ten richest people on the planet. I asked friends about it, and they shrugged it off. The city has always attracted the homeless because of the mild weather. It's a drug thing, or it's too difficult. You get used to it. Well, I didn't, Blaine continued. I found it quite shocking, the number of folks sleeping rough on the sidewalks, the filth, mental illness, and degradation on view just a few meters from the financial center driving Silicon Valley. It's a city where the destitute seem to have become invisible to the uber-hailing elites. We found ourselves hopping on one of the beautiful F-route trolley buses to find nearly every seat occupied by someone lugging around their worldly possessions in a plastic bag. It was desperately sad, Blaine exposed. On top of all that, San Francisco has the highest rate of carjackings in the country. Since last year, the number of car break-ins has spiked nearly 200%. On average, 74 car break-ins happen in San Francisco every day. However, the district attorney's office says that officers only make arrests in less than 2% of car break-in cases. It has been said that, as goes California, so goes the country. So, if this is where the rest of the nation is headed, this means we are in deep, deep trouble. According to data provided by the National Insurance Bureau, other cities around the country also recorded a massive surge in the number of carjackings. From 2019 to 2021, Minneapolis saw the rate of overall carjackings skyrocket by 339%, followed by New York City at 277%, Washington, D.C. at 267%, Chicago at 171 New Orleans at 170%. If only America's founders could see us now, they would be incredibly disgusted. Our major cities are gradually becoming uninhabitable hellholes where problems like these are considered normal. America is in an advanced state of decay, and conditions continue to deteriorate with each passing year. If nothing is done to reverse this alarming trend, homelessness, poverty, and public health problems will just keep getting worse. Unfortunately, right now, there are no signs that the overall direction of this nation will change any time soon. And our once beautiful and prosperous economic landscape will continue to rot right before our eyes.